So I think I speak for a vast majority of people when I say that the UFC Apex has been stale uh, for years. During the time where I was at peak use in the pandemic, it was great because we could still put on fights while also not worrying about crowd safety concerns as there were none at the time. And if there were, then, um, you know. And by around 2021, the UFC started going back uh, to their original scheduling of crowded events, and it was all fine and dandy. Of course, there were still a lot of safety protocols that they had to follow, but those started to kind of dwindle, and more and more people were coming to UFC events, as they usually did before the pandemic. But as a safeguard, the UFC didn't want to completely throw away the apex after the pandemic was pretty much resolved. They kind of decided, hey, we can just use this for Dana White's Contender Series, the old Ultimate Fighter, and we can even use this for UFC fight nights nobody wants to watch. It's perfect. So that carried on from 2021 to 2022 to 2023 and still in 2024. The pandemic was four years ago, guys. Come on. We got so many cool wars in the Apex, such as Dan Hooker versus Dustin Poirier, Davis and Figueredo versus Brandon Moreno. Let's not sour the memory of the Apex. Let's just move on, because we are soliciting potentially great cards, such as Jared Cannonier versus Kyle Barajo, which proved to be great, and that wasn't a coincidence either. This card was built to be a very good one, as there were not only the two Ultimate Fighter fights, there was also a really good main event, and a few really good undercard fights as well. And that was also including the chick that beat Valentina Shevchenko in kickboxing. Which, if you know anything about Valentina Shevchenko, that's nothing to scoff at. So, I mean, given how built up this card was, and how great it proved to be, why are we still scheduling fights in the apex. And to add on to why I feel this way, the UFC has the ability to assemble really good events like the one we got last weekend, but instead of that being in a crowd, it's in a damn near empty arena, whereas you have a subpar event on paper that just so happens to meet expectations, scheduled to be in a big crowd in Denver, Colorado. And look, I'm not saying that you should completely make them switch places, because I feel like both of those events still function pretty well as crowded events, but personally, I just really don't like the inconsistency. While it would still be ill-advised, I feel like if they were to say not have the amount of people in the Apex as they do now and keeping that kind of vintage UFC Apex style to it where you just get to hear the fight and all the shots in it rather than the crowd then I'd understand that but they've started implementing seats for VIPs which in my opinion is a step in the wrong direction. It's been made abundantly clear that the UFC isn't under any crazy financial burden maybe aside from like the antitrust lawsuit but even then Dana White doesn't really seem to care about that so if that's the case and the UFC isn't going through any financial turmoil then why are we still in the dark ages. I mean, in about a week, we have Gilbert Burns versus Sean Brady as a main event to a UFC Apex fight night. I mean, I don't know, maybe they think that if they put on better fights in the UFC Apex, people would be more inclined to watch, but that's not the issue. The people are sick of the UFC Apex, me included. What was stopping you from scheduling it in somewhere like Brazil or Pennsylvania or somewhere in the East Coast that really likes Sean Brady? I wanna bring up the fact that when I went to UFC St. Louis, over 16,000 other people showed up, even though this was just like, oh, it was Derek Lewis, and it was this random fat Brazilian guy. But people were craving the UFC, and it got, I think, around 16,000 people to show up, which is nothing to scoff at. I think the UFC is forgetting the importance of crowds and how that builds the sport, and are instead just looking at the money. Like, just the money. No fan service, no nothing. As long as their pockets are filled, they do not give a shit. I mean, think of how many crowd moments we've lost because of the UFC Apex. Now, given the UFC Apex being installed in the first place was a great thing, but now that we're post-pandemic, we've got a lot of these very good, charismatic fighters built to fight in random Apex fights that nobody's gonna remember in two years. And people might be thinking, oh, well, maybe the Apex actually does make them more money as they've been implementing seats and stuff where VIPs can purchase tickets and get to sit right by the UFC Apex. Maybe they're making a lot of money from that. But what if I were to tell you that's not the case at all? You see, the UFC Apex was designed to have around, uh, I wanna say 500, if we're comparing it to the 16,000, that's jack shit. But if they were to jack up the 
prices, then that would be a lot, right? Well, you see, the UFC has been jacking up the prices, but if you compare that to what they're charging for regular crowded fight nights, of course, excluding cost, they're making much less money. And even if we were to factor in cost, I still feel like the differences in profit from UFC Apex events and UFC crowded events are night and day. If you remember when they did Ultimate Fighter exclusive cards, they'd always have smaller venues to kind of occupy those specific fights, and they would usually range from around like 1,800 to 2,000 people. My thought is, what if you rent out those venues, those smaller venues, that can maybe hold around 2,000 to 3,000 people in a state populated by UFC fans, and due to the high demand, jack up the prices like crazy there, who want to feel the aura of a crowd while they're watching the fights, but also bring even more of a profit to a lucrative business like the UFC. And, oh, yeah, speaking of the Ultimate Fighter, there's another thing that I wanted to get off my chest. So, with the Ultimate Fighter, you got these guys working their asses off, fighting in a tournament where they sp pretty much spend their livelihood for the next nine weeks at the UFC Apex. They work incredibly hard to get into the finals, and when they do, they're greeted with the Apex again. Now, given Tough 31 was actually in an arena, but that was the undercard to, I believe, UFC 291. And I'm pretty sure the only reason that happened was because it was the season where Conor McGregor and Michael Chandler were coaching. And after that, most recently, actually, in the Kyle Barajo versus Jared Cannonier card, you had two incredibly promising prospects from The Ultimate Fighter in a desolate arena. I mean, shit, doesn't that sound sad? I mean, we've known for years that the UFC has started caring less and less about the Ultimate Fighter because there are series like Dana White's Contender Series taking over the people's interests. But if that's the case, then to be honest with you, you gotta pull an old yeller and just put it down. Because the magic of the older days of the Ultimate Fighter was the crowd's reaction to this astonishing brutality that they've never seen before and showcasing new levels of prospects to thousands of people watching in the crowd, where these warriors received the ovations that they deserve. And I get that not happening during the pandemic, but after that, the integrity has kind of dwindled and that passion has just kind of been lost. All right, so I'm recording this three hours after I recorded the original video because I actually left something out that I really wanted to talk about. Now, while we do see this on the Contender Series 2 and it's also a problem there, you can't can't tell me with the straight face that you like hearing. All the damn time. I hate it. I despise it. I can imagine if this kid was screaming on a packed crowd, then it would be less annoying and probably not annoying at all as the crowd is going to do its work. But whenever you see a fighter bring their kid onto, like, let's say, their UFC Apex fight or their Dana White's Contender Series fight, you always hear... And look, I get it, the kid's excited, but you can't tell me that you, that you want to hear that for 15 minutes in a fight. Like, that's just a mess. Oh yeah, and one more thing about the kids in the crowd. If you disagree or don't really see where I'm coming from, just think of Eddie Alvarez's wife screaming at the top of her lungs at the Apex. Yeah, that's terrifying. But in conclusion, I feel like the UFC is really pushing the UFC apex to the point where it's not really seen as a saving grace anymore like it was in the pandemic. It's now being seen as an annoyance as well as a second class venue. But what do you guys think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Personally, I really don't like the apex and what it's become. And I want to see if you guys share that same sentiment with me. But with that said, thank you so much for watching. This is On The Liver MMA. I'm not going to disappear again. Trust me, and I'm signing out. Goodbye.